I'm going to explain every single item in Albion Online, at least all of the equipment you can wear. And this is aimed towards solo, guildless players. Now, I've made something similar in the past, a couple years ago, where I explained every single item. It's called the primary use of every item in Albion Online. Of course, there's been a few patches and a few changes. Now, I did explain this for ZVZs and people in guilds, but this specific video is primarily for solo players, and the reason why is because I'm a solo player. I've given up all hope to find a guild that's, uh, you know, would take me in and treat me right. They're, they just don't exist in this game or any game. It could be a me problem, but anyway. The point is, is that 80% of the player base are just like me, so I'm making this video for the majority of players, not the tiny minority that join guilds. With that said, this is how the video is going to work. We're going to start at the top of the Destiny board here. We're going to scroll all the way up, and we're going to start at the Tome Fighting items here. So, I know people don't want to watch an entire video about items they don't care about. So, for example, let's say that you want to know about uh, Plate Boots for some reason. Well, Plate Boots will be the last thing we cover because we're going to start at the top, and we're going to go towards the left and cover all of these items and how you would use them as a solo player if they're worth using. So, if you want to skip around, just scroll the video to the item that you want to learn about. That's fine. It only hurts my uh, my earnings and my YouTube channel, uh, but you'll get the information you want. So let's get started. This is all one take, completely unedited. Let's begin here. We are beginning with the Tome Fighter, and we're starting with the Tome of Spells. This is an offhand item that will increase, uh, or I'm sorry, decrease your cast time and give you a little bit more energy. This is one of the cheaper offhands in the game. You're going to primarily use this if you're throwing away a set in the black zone or the red zone, or if you are a spellcaster build. This is your go-to item, the Tome of Spells. Most people will be using this. Feel free to upgrade it. Uh, it's pretty dang good. The Eye of Secrets is an absolutely worthless item for us solo players. Maybe if you're low level, low spec, it might have a little bit of use, but there are far better items to use to regenerate your energy and give you more energy. This is not efficient. There are better offhands. Do not ever use this. Don't bother ever even keeping one. The Moizak, if that's how you pronounce it, which that's how I've heard everyone else pronounce it, is the second best damage steroid offhand in the game. It increases your auto attack damage and your spells and abilities. And now what it does also, it makes those spells cost more energy. Uh, but it's not bad. It is overshadowed by the Crypt Candle in damage, but the Crypt Candle does not increase your auto attack. So for certain builds that rely on auto attacks, this is your best in slot offhand, the Moizak. The Taproot increases your health and um, a little bit of regeneration, but no one cares about that. This is really useful at in-game if you are ganking yellow zones and combine it with a uh, beef sandwich to get even more HP out of it. This thing can dramatically boost your health but it's an expensive item that you don't see people use most often. The Celestial Sensor, as a solo player, you won't be using this. This is purely for dedicated PvE healers that just need to heal more damage. So you won't be using this as a solo player. There are better offhands for you. Next up is the most powerful and the best weapon tree in the entire game, the Warlock Tree. This is what I recommend all new players start with, and this is... This weapon tree is the most versatile. It is the current meta for solo player PvP. That is 1v1 PvP, Mist PvP, Corrupted Dungeon PvP. It is insanely useful for clearing dungeons, though it's not the fastest at dungeons, and I'll explain why once we get to crossbows. But it is the fastest uh, for soloing group dungeons. It is the fastest for soloing static group dungeons. This is the weapon tree that you want to completely max out, and this is my Soul Benji character, which is not even my main character. I just use this character for videos, and even I have everything at level 100 on this character. That's how useful it is. So let's get started with the Curse Staff. This is one of the cheapest weapons in the game, and allows you to kill highly geared players due to its execution-style spell. You stack up your four curses, you hit them with the Death Curse, they take tremendous damage, they take damage over time, you have an Armor Shred, it's super, super good stuff, and you have AO AOE attacks, you have a Root, you have an Auto Attack Steroid, this, this weapon line is just beefy. The Great Curse Staff is more so for Faction Warfare, it doesn't really have much use to a solo player because there's just simply better weapons. 
but this weapon in general can quickly apply four stacks. It can be useful in corrupted dungeons, though I'm not very good at it personally. The Demonic Staff used to be the meta weapon for uh, corrupted dungeons and for the mists. However, it was heavily nerfed. When you cast this Anguish Soul, it eats all of your charges in a future patch. Probably by the time you see this, it might be out. It will only eat two charges. It's still kind of a, an iffy weapon. I don't know. It might regain its status. Probably not. The Life Curse Staff, if they ever fix skinning bugs, is the best skinning weapon in the entire game. It allows you to reach enemies from far away, reduce how much damage they take, and this Enfeeble Blades is used by certain gatherers to absolutely dominate Black Zone Gathering. This removes uh, and purges buffs, so if they go invisible and you manage to hit them with this spell, then they lose their invisibility. <laughs> it's a fun weapon, it's a powerful weapon, and it's pretty darn cheap. The Cursed Skull is a meta weapon in Corrupted Dungeons. I'm no good at using this thing, but I get my butt kicked by this all the time. It produces a large circle on the ground, and it hurts heavily. It's, you know, it's easy to hit enemies with most of the time if you're good, I guess. The only garbage weapon for solo players is the Damnation Staff, which is a very large radius with a large cast time, but it deals barely any damage. This is only used to lower enemies' damage resistances. There are way better ways, uh, like this spell, the Armor Piercer, to lower damage resistance and deal more damage. It's like, like this is ridiculous that, like, this E spell is weaker than your W spell. Uh, <laughs> it's just, this is just a trash weapon. You won't be using this as a solo player at all. And finally, the Shadow Collar, the number one weapon in clearing group dungeons quickly and clearing uh, <laughs> solo, uh, not solo dungeons, but uh, soloing static areas is, is this weapon right here. This weapon, when combined with a leather jacket, will heal you for all the damage you deal in, a, in an AOE circle around you. This thing is nutty. It's a one-handed Avalonian weapon, meaning it has the highest possible item power and can be juiced up by an offhand. There's not many of those in the game. This is also the most expensive weapon in the entire game. So you need to get this at some point, level it up, and you will make everything else easier to do. Moving on, we have the Frost Mage. Frost Mages aren't really that prevalent for solo players, but they do have their own place. They're not the fastest at clearing uh, corrupted dungeons. They're not really good at clearing dungeons at all. Despite what a few YouTubers who have long quit the game have said a couple years ago, uh, these are trash weapons for clearing dungeons. Uh, they've been heavily nerfed over time, and they're more of a hit-and-run weapon, especially the Frost Staff, which can be used in Faction Warfare to tag lots of enemies and escape unharmed. You can also use this to root a player and then chain them with an armor, which I'll talk about later, and secure a couple kills in, like, say, Red Zone, Faction PvP, stuff like that. But otherwise... The Frost Staff is not that good for solo players. The Great Frost Staff, also not that good. It's a little bit better if you want to farm mobs, like open world mobs with this. It's not terrible, but it's there's better weapons. The, the fro these Frost Staffs are not that good, again, for solo players. Glacial Staff is kind of a meme for solo players. You can dump an Ice Storm on a, like, say, a lootable chest that's about to open where everyone's PvP flag. You can dump one of these on a faction outpost and maybe hit a few people. But I have seen people maximum spec 8.4 use this thing, and it barely tickles me also in 8.4. So, in an, in an evenly geared fight, this is just a garbage weapon. It's mostly used by guilds to slow down, like, people from running away. This uh, staff, which I don't want to say because it's a naughty word, and YouTube does not like naughty words. Uh, it's just a crappier version of a fire staff spell. Uh, not that good. Um, it really doesn't have much of a use. The stun is not worth using. The Icicle Staff, it's just a big slow, it barely deals damage. Again, this is for guilds, it's not for us solo players. However, the Permafrost Prism, out of all the Frost Staffs, this one has some solo usage. The Ice Crystal spell here used to be the best in the game at solo ganking transports. So you would root the transport with this, you would, will stun them, freeze them, whatever, it's a stun I guess. And then you would just dump as many Ice Shards in the, on them as possible. And when 8.4 items came out, this item didn't scale as well as Bear Paws, putting it in second place for killing transports. It's still really good. You can see here on my Soul Binji character, I actually have Permafrost Prism at level 100. Uh, so it is very useful in that regard, but it's just outclassed by Bear Paws. 
The Chill Howl is a meta weapon for Corrupted Dungeons. It's also really good for hit and run PvP in the mists with its Glacial Prison. You can basically teleport at someone, cast this, they, they won't be able to fight back. Once this breaks, you can hit them with a Frostbite or a Frozen Surge and then just zone them out. It's a very, it's one of the most powerful zoning weapons in the game besides the um, Arcane Staffs. Which is next, the Arcane Staffs. They're decent, they've been buffed, they're still not the best, but you have the regular Arcane Staff, which just has a damage. Yes, this purges buffs on enemies, there's better ways to do that with, like, say, the Life Curse Staff. This uh, just gives you a little bit more mobility in Corrupted Dungeons. It's okay for soloing solo dungeons at higher tiers, it's actually very fast. Uh, when you have a double Mimic here, or, I'm sorry, Magic Shock, and then you Mimic yourself for Magic Shock, it's, it's on par with Crossbows. It's not better than crossbows, but it's it's close enough. The Great Arcane Staff is the time freeze. You can't troll your team anymore with this. Uh, it's also, it'll piss off people that are, do organized PvP if you tag along with them in, say, a faction fight. So a great troll weapon. Cast this on the enemy and uh, someone's going to be screaming in a Discord somewhere. En Enigmatic Staff. This pops a shield on a bunch of people. This is actually really useful in faction warfare, but the problem with being a solo player is that even if you cast this on a group of people, it doesn't give you credit for their kills like healing them would, so there's no reason for you to ever actually use this, unless you don't care about earning points. The Witch Work Staff is actually really good if you're in a party, but this is a video for solo players. This will drag all the enemies and clump them together, which is great for bombing faction enemy fights. It's also great for soloing static zones very quickly, but uh, as a solo player, you don't have much use for this. The Occult Staff gives you a little time quarter, you can move fast. This doesn't have much use for solo players. You don't really have a need to chase enemies with these subpar spells. Pretty useless item for solo players. This one creates a bubble, which um, increases armor damage resistance. Again, if you cast this in a faction fight, you're being helpful. You're being, you know, a good little wagey. But you're not earning the shared amount of points as if you just healed them. So there's no reason to ever use this. The Evensong is uh, it reduces healing received and it also reduces damage dealt by enemies. It does low damage. There's no reason for a solo player to really use this for anything. It's just for like action fights, I guess. But there's better weapons to tag enemies with so you can earn more points. Next up is the priest weapon line, which is decent for solo players. It It's slow starting. This thing hits so, it's so weak if you don't have spec or higher tier gear. It sucks for mob farming. But if you level it up, you can become pretty much unkillable in a 1v1 for the most part, especially with this life touch staff. You can't be like, hold on, let me show you. Let me find it here. Uh, yeah, so if you have Holy Blessing up, you can't be moved. And then if you have your E spell, you can't be uh, crowd controlled. Uh, you, you're channeling basically, you can do this while su stunned or silenced. So you can always be healing yourself and you can't be interrupted. It's, it's nutty. For solo play, but other than that, um, there, I mean, you know, a group of people can still take you down, but 1v1, this is probably the weapon to go, uh, besides the nature stabs, if you don't want to ever die. But other than that, you just have smite for farming mobs, which, again, it gets strong when you have tier 8.4 and maximum spec, it's pretty good. Not as good as crossbows or the arcane staff, but it's still decent enough that you can, you can solo group dungeons with it, you can solo static mobs with it. It's just slower. There's, it's, it's just inferior to other weapons. But um, you can also just spam heals in faction fights and get a lot of points. So that's why you would want to go Holy Staffs. Anyway, the regular Holy Staff is just a quick one single target heal. It's decent. The Great Holy Staff knocks enemies back and heals a little bit. So this is good for tagging enemies and allies in faction fights. The Divine Staff uh, is a shield. And for whatever reason, the shields don't give you points I'm not sure why, but this does heal players, so you can start getting faction points with that. The life touch staff I've covered earlier, but this is a channeled heal where you can do while stunned and silenced. Uh, again, it's just a single target. The fallen staff is the go-to for, like, say, arenas and uh, faction fights. It is slow going, so a lot of times, if you're not good at, at this weapon, targets will die before you get your heal off. Uh, the redemption staff... Uh, it just, it's a little orb that jumps around. It's, it's nice. It's, you fire and forget it. It's not bad, but it's out. It, like, the Fallen Staff is what you want to go if you want to tag players. The Hallow Fall is a Corrupted Dungeon meta weapon, which you can use to kill players with. It's probably the 
corrupted dungeon weapon that you would want to use. It knocks enemies in the air, which you can interrupt them from healing themselves. Uh, so if you wanted to go a healing staff and corrupted dungeons, go the Hallow Fall. It is expensive. It's also a one-handed Avalonian weapon, which uh, is the same as the Shadow Caller, but the Shadow Caller is simply better. Uh, Pyromancer, the Fire Staff Tree is decent. It's not the best, but for solo players, you could make it at work. You could make it happen. The Fire Staff has a Pyroblast ability, and in a future patch, this is not aimable. This is target. You target the enemy, and then it will cast at them. If something's in front, it'll block it. This has a use as when gathering. If you need to steal a 4.3 spawn, this is one of the better weapons to use, though the spike gauntlets are the best. This is the second best. It's also useful to use firewall to push enemies away as you skin other enemies or gather. It's it's pretty useful. Uh, fire staffs in general are decently useful for tagging lots of players. You can also attack from very far away with the artillery, fire artillery spell. So that's really nice, especially if the target is using boots and running away. You can just spew fire all over the battlefield, tagging lots of enemies, and you get those faction points. The Great Fire Staff, Flame Pillar, it's okay, but it's overshadowed by uh, the crossbow abilities. The Infernal Staff, it's getting reworked once again for the new patch, but it's, I, it's still garbage. This thing actually used to be insanely, ridiculously annoying to deal with. What would happen is one player would get caught on fire and they would run through a crowd of, uh, of your of your friends and it would just kill everybody and they, they've nerfed it <laughs> long since. It's kind of a dead weapon. The Wildfire Staff is a meta 1v1 PvP weapon in the mists and a 1v1 weapon in Corrupted Dungeons. This thing has a long range. It's way better than the Frost Staff version of the, you know, rolling a boulder at the enemy. It deals lots of damage, lots of maximum health is true damage. It's, um, this is the weapon you would use to whittle someone down in a corrupted dungeon. It's super annoying to fight, uh, in, like, faction PvP, it's not really, you don't really notice that much, but in 1v1s, it's super tough. The Brimstone Staff is the, the meme where you drop a meteor on a clump of players, killing them all. This thing is going to make a huge comeback with the Morgana Cape changes coming up in the next patch. I've even made a video for members only explaining how to best utilize this specific weapon, and my members have bought out all the 8.4 items on the market, so the, this is going to be hard to get your hands on. But as a solo player, I'm I'm actually considering leveling this up. Uh, I'm still on the fence, though. I want to see what the new weapon line that comes out is. Uh, <laughs> so I'll have to update this video with that weapon line. But until then, we have the Blazing Staff. This thing in weapon testing with maximum spec 8.4. This thing is really good at sniping open world bosses. Uh, whenever... Uh, there's certain, like, events like the anniversary event or holiday events. Sometimes there's these big statue bosses that roam the open worlds. This weapon just slays them. It is insane. It is really high damage, but in PvP, people just walk out of it. And as a solo player, you don't really have much use other than farming open world mobs. The Dawn Song, you can tag enemies with this pretty easy in faction fights, but other than that, it's pretty useless for basically everything else a solo player would do. Now we have the Cloth Helmet line. Out of the Cloth Helmet line, this is one thing that you would definitely want to max as it greatly benefits from increasing the item power. You can see here on my Soul Budget character, every single Cloth Helmet is maxed out. And let me tell you why. Because you're going, most players will start with the Scholar Cow. This increases your armor, resistance, and it gives you energy regeneration when you take damage. This is a mana battery. You cast this, you get full mana. It's really, really good. It doesn't really scale when you level it, but it scales other uh, helmets, which I'll talk about here in a bit. The Cleric Cow is the most hated item for organized guilds and faction PvPers and discords. They they hate, if they see you wear this, they hate you for it. And that's why it's really, really good. Because the Ice Walk ability makes you basically immune to all damage and effects and everything. And um, you can just sit in an ice cube and chill while everyone around you dies, and then you can loot and scoot. It's <laughs> super annoying to fight against. People sometimes use this just to get extra cooldown time for their abilities while taking zero damage. The Mage Cow was recently changed. It used to be a poison ability. Now it's a Fire Breath ability, which for us solo players, that is better. The Fire Breath is a buff to us because it changes our attack into an area of effect attack, dealing around the same amount of damage. The Royal Cow is used to reduce your energy cost to zero. This is mainly useful for Frost Mages, spamming spells with cooldown reduction and uh, faster casting speed. It doesn't really have much other use. Healers might use it, but healers often would use a druid cow, 
because this drops a circle on the ground that restores your energy for everyone that stands on it. You cannot tag allies with this, sadly. You have to heal them to con be considered tagging them. Four faction point earned. The Fiend Cal just purges enemies of buffs, and this is mostly used to turn someone's boots off when they're running away from you. <laughs> Uh, that's really all it is. It just turns off their boots. You can use it if they cast, like, a uh, Stalker Jacket to turn their healing off. The Cultist Cal does a huge amount of damage to a single target for PvE. In PvP, if someone has an auto-attack build or a faster cast build, and they start attacking you with this on them, they will basically die. It's super useful uh, against, like, dual swords, bows, and, and Whispering Bow, but other than that, it's... If a player just doesn't attack you when you cast this on them, it buys you some time. That's all it really does. The face scale hat uh, makes your channels uninterruptible. So this is used for bombing faction outposts, uh, you know, whenever you have a channeled spell like Siege Crossbow or Longbow. Pretty useful, but other than that, it's kind of a meme, not much useful elsewhere. The Cal of Purity shoots a laser beam that deals damage, interrupts spell casting. It's a better Mage Cal, but it's so much more expensive. For instance, a regular Mage Cal is 800 silver. This thing is 30,000 at tier 8. Or, yeah, tier 8, 64,000 versus 826,000. It, it's just a it, it's just a price. If you're Gucci, if you want the Cal of Purity, it will give you a bit more max health and stuff and energy because it is an Avalonian item, whereas the Mage Cal is a standard item. But other than that, let's talk about the Cloth Robes. Starting off with the Scholar Robe, this halves your casting time. Pretty useful, but the new Morgana Cape changes are going to put this thing on a lower tier. This is in the tier list, but essentially the Scholar Robe is going to kind of, you know, take a break for a while, sit on the bench when the new Morgana Cape comes out. Cleric Robe, insanely useful. Uh, this is one of the chess pieces you might want to max out. The Everlasting Spirit will give you just enough time and a damage increase to finish off a, an opponent in 1v1 combat. It's also used to dodge uh, executions and other attacks that would otherwise kill you. Super handy, super useful. Mage Robe, it's, uh, it purges anyone that hits you while it's active. It gives you a little bit of extra damage res resistance. Use this to turn off someone's uh, uh, Hellion Jacket, basically. <laughs> I think I called it Stalker Jacket earlier, but you could turn those off too, I think. I'm not really sure. I don't really use Mage Robe much because, well, I don't like counterplay. I like to just kill opponents. Uh, the Royal Robe is a damage steroid for only spellcasting. Healers might use this. Solo players don't really end up using this for anything. Because the Druid Robe is a damage steroid for everything. Damage, healing, spells, physical attacks. This thing is, in, is the go-to weapon if you are soloing open world mobs, if you are soloing uh, dungeon mobs. Now, if you can one-shot open world mobs without this buff, then obviously you can just wear, uh, you know, something with a higher base um, bonus. Like, this has a base physical attack bonus magic of, of 40%, right? But if you get to these higher, like, tier ones, like like the Cultist Robe has 50%, Face Scale 50%, and, you know, Robe of Purity 50%, of course. A Mage Robe is also a 50%, you know, in damage handling, so you do get more base damage from it. But... With the active ability that gives you 6% damage up to 6 times, that is 36% additional damage, making it far better than the Cultist Robe. You should, like, for solo content, you don't need to ever heal yourself. In PvP, absolutely, but in for dungeons, for open world mobs, this is a useless ability. If you're fighting a, a, a spiky boss mob in the open world, this will suit you far, far better. It's also better for dungeon running. There's no reason to use Dru there's no reason to use Cultist Robe unless you're PvP. With that said, we have the Fiend Robe. This is for fearing enemies. This is for ganking groups. I haven't really seen this used anywhere else. I don't really know if you can interrupt like mobs with it. I've never bothered to try, but it's pretty useless for solo players. It's Cultist Robe. Uh, this increases your damage resistance. It's useful for corrupted dungeons and open world PvP, but people will just knock you out of it. The face scale robe is fairly new, but it has a very nice spell called Frozen Fragments. Makes five little icy spikes that whenever you attack an enemy, they also attack. This thing is a it's actually very powerful for like like nuking down a target quickly with an auto attack build. It's pretty damn good when you have it fully leveled up. I've done a lot of testing on the test realm and it it's it gets pretty nutty. The uh, most annoying armor in the entire game is the robe of purity. This thing just Gives you a bubble that when you touch someone, it bumps them really far away. 
Um, also, you can't be forced moved, you can't be knocked back, you can't be knocked up or around when it's active. This thing is just really annoying. You can run through a crowd of enemy players and knock them all to the side. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. Let's talk about cloth sandals for a bit. Cloth sandals. Uh, Scholar Sandals gives you, uh, it gives you energy, it also makes you immune to stuns, roots, and slows. This used to be meta for Corrupted Dungeons, not so much anymore. As the, um, all boot, all cloth boots get energetic sprint, which is usually better for in most cases. Cleric Sandals lets you teleport, and you can, if you teleport just right, you can immune any damage, uh, f during that time. It's really hard to time, though. Mage Sandals are a delayed teleport. This is useful for... Galatine pair nuke peoples that want to cast Galatine pair and then teleport into a blob. As for a solo player, unless you're faction bombing, it's pretty useless for us. Royal Sandals, this is one of the best go-to uh, boots in the entire game for solo players because it's a very fast move speed on par with non-galloping players, uh, meaning if someone's mounted and they're not in a gallop, you can catch up to them most of the time. Not always. It does lower your defense, so it makes you a little bit squishy, but it increases your damage by 15% for a decent amount of time, making it one of the better damage steroid boots in the game. It's great for chase, uh, it's great for running away, um, it's not the best for running away, but it's still pretty darn good. Druid Sandals is really good for tagging players in faction fights. It uh, drops a little debuff slow trail of icy crystals on the ground. If enemies touch it, they become slowed. Which gives you credit if they die in faction PvP. Very useful, but otherwise useless in everything but faction PvP. The Fiend Sandals lets you swap your position with a target. This can kind of like confuse someone a bit. If you're a Fire Staff user in a Corrupted Dungeon, you could pin people against walls with Firewall. Otherwise, it's not that useful, I guess. I don't really know why you would use this currently for a solo player. The Cultist Sandals are the best PvE boots in the entire game because it lowers the damage resistance of enemies, meaning you will deal tremendous amounts of damage to them because they will have less armor. This is really, really good for soloing bosses, dungeon bosses, static enemies, uh, even faction outposts. This is my go-to boots for soloing those. The face scale sandals uh, basically make you untargetable and immune to damage while you channel it, so this is a good disengage boot for faction fighting, but uh, usually most of the time they, you get run down by hundreds of players anyway, you're not going to escape. The Sandals of Purity are really nice for mobility, it has a 10 second cooldown, it's really useful uh, just in general for floating around. I've not really seen anyone really make a play with these boots though, so maybe someone out there will discover something. Let's see here, we have the torches. The torches are an offhand um, that you can use, which are uh, pretty good, let's talk about them. Uh, Adept's Torch, the cooldown, it lowers your cooldowns, it makes you attack faster. Pretty useful for a lot of builds. The Mist Collar just lowers your cooldowns a little bit more than the Torch, but um, no attack speed. The Leering Cane is useful for uh, increasing your crowd control time. So if you root someone and you have a Leering Cane, you will root them for longer. It's not super useful for solo players, but it's actually, it, it can be useful in faction fights. Crypt Candle is the go-to damage steroid offhand in the entire game. This thing will buff your damage higher than the Moizak, but it does not buff your auto attack damage. On the downside, it makes you squishier. The stronger your Crypt Candle is, the more defense that you lose against players and mobs, meaning you are easier to kill. This is my go-to for clearing, you know, dungeons, static dungeons, solo dungeons, group dungeons. It's also my go-to for just killing open world everything because I go I go glass cannon I want to kill fast all right and get killed even faster apparently the sacred scepter lower or increases your your crowd control resistance so if someone tries to root you they won't root you as long this is just useful if you're transporting goods otherwise kind of useless for solo players order staffs are not that great for solo players they are not good in pve uh, there are way better options, but there's some memes that you can use, you know, they're not entirely useless, but you don't need to level them up, let's just say that. The quarterstaff, you jump at an enemy and you deal damage, you knock them in the air, nothing really special about the quarterstaff. The ironclad staff makes you do a whirlwind, which knocks enemies back. This can be useful for knocking multiple players into static mobs so that they get killed, especially in a raid zone if you want to be what's called a rat and you go to a world boss and you knock players into enemies, 
Uh, the enemies will down the players. You can execute the players and take their loot. Really fun, but I think a Bedrock Mace is simply better for that job. The Double Bladed Staff is great because it gives you a movement ability that leaps you forward very quickly and pretty far too. It's great for skip sets. This is your go-to weapon if you want to skip dungeon floors, scout out treasure, or just run away from whatever it is. Black Monk Stave, you can use this to tag enemy players, though there are better weapons for that. It doesn't deal good damage, and who cares about debuffing enemies in a faction fight? You're a solo player. What happens to your faction or to them does not matter to you. There are better weapons for tagging enemies. The Soul Scythe, again, this is more of a ZVZ weapon. Pretty useless for us solo players. You can tag enemies with it, I guess. But um, solo players have no use for this weapon. Staff of Balance, another useless weapon for solo players. This um, <laughs> increases your damage resistance, reduces enemy healing. You can tag enemy players with it. It's actually pretty good for tagging enemy players. Uh, you can't be receive healing while it's active, though, and you'll just die. There's better ways to tag than this. I would recommend a healing weapon to tag allies and use your armor abilities to tag enemies. The Grail Seeker is probably the best crowd control weapon in the entire game. It has a very long range. You can cast it twice. It, it shoots a line on the ground that if enemies touch it, they become rooted. Uh, this is very useful for 2v2s. It's probably the meta 2v2 weapon, but for solo players, pretty darn useless. Let's talk about daggers. Uh, sorry for the dead air. Okay, so the standard dagger. Great for killing a single target if you can hold them down. If they have any kind of mobility, it doesn't work. This is also the weapon to use to solo very specific group dungeon bosses. There are like two bosses in the game that you absolutely cannot kill without having an 8.4 dagger with maximum spec. Uh, because of their self-healing and because of other mechanics. This is probably one of the highest single target DPS weapons in the game, even for sustained, um, that can be argued from HCE, hardcore expedition players, but I digress for soloing, group dungeon bosses, this weapon will get the job done, um, and it, it's the only weapon that can kill a specific few bosses. The dagger pair is probably one of the best one shot burst from invis weapons in the entire game, it deals tremendous upfront damage if you have the correct combo. I have a channel. I'm sorry, I have a video for members that kind of explains this a bit. Other YouTubers have made plenty of dagger one-shot builds. It's no secret. Uh, go out there. If you if you just want to go invisible and kill one guy, this is the weapon to do it with. The claws are kind of like dagger pair. They technically deal more damage if you can get the full combo off, but it takes longer to execute, uh, and it doesn't synergize with, say, Assassin Jacket as well due to the nature of how that works. But it is still a great solo ganking weapon. You, like, there are pl plenty of people that max this out. And if they lock onto you with this, then you, you're you as good as dead if you don't have the right build. Bloodletter is one of the high, higher mobility weapons in the game, if not the highest mobility weapon. Uh, it is getting a slight nerf in mobility in a future patch. But regardless, it is the execute weapon of choice. You can run around a battlefield like a faction fight and execute players if they are below 40% HP. This used to be the most feared weapon on all of the battlefield. If you saw a bunch of people wearing this, you would just be like, it's over. But it's not as strong anymore, and it's not really that useful for anything else other than faction PvP. Demon Fang, again, a pretty crappy weapon. There are other weapons that deal way more damage more efficiently than this. This is kind of a meme weapon. It used to be the Black Hands, which got removed from the game, which used to be the best corrupted dungeon weapon in the entire game, sadly. But it's gone now, unfortunately. We have this... Um, again, not a good weapon for anything really for solo players. The Death Givers, great for 1v1s. It's kind of like a hit and run weapon. It's kind of like a zoning weapon. Uh, they can be fun. They can be annoying to fight. But other than that, it's not really useful in PvE. The Bridled Fury, out of all the daggers, this one would probably be the one you would use to farm like open world mobs. Maybe you, you can solo group dungeon mobs with this, but it's slow. It doesn't really have much of a use. In faction fighting, it does not do damage escalation, which means the more enemies you hit, the more damage you deal. This weapon is just to disengage enemies and hit them one time. It's kind of a weird meme. Not really good for solo players. But Nature Staff is great for solo players. Uh, Nature Staff has a heal and a damage in its E spell. Great for soloing dungeons. At higher tier solo dungeons, this is your go-to weapon of choice. Uh, great Nature Staff uh, is great for running through packs of enemies and being fully healed. 
If enemies are dumb enough to hit you while you have living, living armor active, you basically fully heal. It's probably one of the best weapons for just running through a bunch of enemies and not dying. It's it's pretty nutty. Like if you if you wanted to tag a bunch of enemy um, like in a, in a faction, this will keep you alive more than anything as long as it's active and doesn't get purged. Uh, which it used to be unpurgeable, but um, I, I back then you could purge it with lumberjack garb. People didn't know this. Uh, fun fun stuff. Wild staff. You drop a big healing circle in the ground. Heals over time. Great for, like, it's super easy to see. Allies will, will run to the circle and tag themselves for you. It's pretty dang useful. Druidic Staff is a great 1v1 weapon. It's probably my favorite dueling weapon in the entire game. Just think of it like a little magic wand. I don't know. <laughs> it's, um, it, it, uh, it is a really hard burst deal. This is my go-to weapon for soloing group dungeon bosses, if necessary. Because of the powerful heal that you can cast on yourself... When combined with protection of nature that steroids that heal, the the thorns and the fact that it's a one-handed item so you can juice it up with an offhand makes it my favorite choice for soloing group dungeon bosses. Uh, you can solo most group dungeon bosses with this except for a select few that have healing mechanics or burst mechanics or the fifth floor dungeon bosses. You can't really solo those. The blight staff is the best weapon in the entire game for tagging your faction friends. This lets you move around while healing in a large, bright, green circle that everyone can see, so they're going to run to you to get heals. This thing is amazing. It's a short cooldown. It heals a very large amount compared to the other ones. When I did healing tests in a separate video, this healed very highly compared to all the other ones. So not only is it useful for tagging allies, you're actually contributing to the fight, I guess. So um, it loses troll points. We'll say that. Rampant Staff drops a big rectangle on the ground that heals players. It's not as good as uh, the Wild Staff or the Blight Staff, but it's something. I believe it's getting nerfed a little bit for some reason in a future patch. Iron Root Staff is for 2v2s. It's awkward to use. There's a meme. You can use this in the red zone to tag someone who is completely unflagged and get them killed. But I don't know if they've ever fixed that. I've never attempted to uh, even try that bug because I don't want to get banned. Um, <laughs> All right, moving on to the Spears. Spears are okay. They, they can do a lot of things the other weapons can do, but they don't excel at them. They're like a jack-of-all-trade weapon, I guess. Uh, so if you just want to do a little bit of everything, they're okay. The regular spear, it's got a good movement ability. It, it, it deals a good amount of damage. It can be annoying to fight against. I don't have much experience with spears. The pike, uh, it used to be like this neat little one-shot weapon, but not anymore. It got nerfed. The Glaive is really fun in faction fights for throwing enemies into a pile behind you. If you are a high mobility build and someone's running away, use this and then they're dead. You're you're throwing them into a pack of hounds. It's it's pretty fun. The uh, Also, by the way, at higher tiers, spears get the harpoon ability. So in faction fights when someone's running away, you use this, yoink them back to your team, and they just get devoured like a pack of zombies. It's so fun. Uh, it, it's a fun weapon. Like, spears are very fun. <laughs> so... Iran Spear, great. This is really good at just tagging enemies. It, 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 you may not think about it, but it's a low cooldown. It stuns. It deals damage in an area of effect when it lands. It's actually like you sit in the back lines and you toss these out and you get a lot of faction points. <laughs> the Spirit Hunter, a little bit longer cooldown. And uh, this thing is really good for soloing group dungeons, soloing group dungeon bosses, and static dungeons. It's actually, it used to be the fastest in the game, believe it or not, but it got nerfed a bit. Uh, it, it does lower damage resistance. This thing also has AOE escalation. So if you throw this in a, in a blob of 100 players, they're all going to die, and like, immediately. It's super fun. The, uh, what is this? The Trinity Spear, really good for corrupted dungeons. This thing is hard to fight against. It's, and it's, uh, there's a couple, like, like, instant win builds out there. I think I have, I made one a long time ago before I had a members-only video. I don't know if it got nerfed because I haven't tried it, but... It, it worked back then. It should work now. I think it's like forgotten tech, honestly. The Daybreaker uh, destroys buffs when you run people through with this. Interesting enough, this was like a meta 1v1 weapon on the first few days of the East server. People who got their hands on a Daybreaker were just slapping everyone around in open world PvP. So at low IP, this thing is bonkers. But at high IP, I've never noticed anyone really make a scratch on me. So... It's not really that good for PvE either. Bows. Bows are interesting. They're, they're more of a PvP weapon, not so much PvE. 
Uh, the regular bow. This thing is really good in Corrupted Dungeons if you know how to use it. Uh, you could also use this to scoot around stuff beyond a weight limit. I think that's getting fixed, though. We'll see. Who knows? Uh, but other than that, just regular bows. The old bow was way better than the new bow. I'm going to tell you that right now. It, this actually got nerfed, but it, it's still pretty darn good in Corrupted Dungeons. I haven't found much use for it elsewhere. Or bow, you can tag one player with this. It deals mediocre damage, even at max spec 8.4, whatever. It um, it's it's just a, it's just a a long range little like chip away weapon, really. It's super annoying to fight in one v one, but other than that, it's okay for PvP. Not much use elsewhere. Longbow is a faction bombing super weapon, and it's really good for open world mobs. This thing absolutely slaps hard, especially at high specs and high uh, weapon grade gear. By the way, if anyone wants to buy a longbow, I have a masterpiece longbow here. Uh, it says it's worth 90 million. Um, so if you're interested in a 8.4 masterpiece longbow, let me know. I'll I'll sell you mine. Um, I'd rather have the silver than the bow at this point because I don't ever use it. I don't need a masterpiece to kill a faction group. I did just a flat eight for me with my specialization will allow me to kill a bomb an entire faction blob. But it's, again, really good. It's also one of the laggiest spells in the game for some reason. If you cast this at a certain angle, and you can, like, the arrows will flood your screen and freeze your game. I, even with super hardware, like a 3080, you know, GPU, you know, a 1050 whatever processor, it, it's nutty. This thing is super laggy for some reason. Uh, next up is the Whispering Boat. This is by far the highest damaged single target turret weapon in the entire game. It does make you squishy by 20% when you cast it. Which sucks for 1v1s. I'm going to tell you right now, I burned through like a couple million silver trying this in 1v1. Even in Viz ganking with it kind of sucked uh, because of the decrease in defense. A flat 4 curse staff will melt you before you even get your combo off. That's how much damage, the, or that's how much defense you lose with this sucker. But if you sit in the back lines of a faction fight, you're going to be able to just left click and kill anyone you want. Even tanks. Even tanks will melt to this weapon. You can see here that uh, I actually have this thing, uh, whoops, that's, that's Druidic Staff. You can see here that I have 107 spec in it, and the Longbow 108 spec. I love me some faction fighting, okay? That's why I've got these things leveled up. And of course, Wailing Bow, we're gonna get to Wailing Bow. Uh, Wailing Bow, this thing is nutty if there are a lot of people fighting in a faction fight. But in smaller scale fi faction fights, this thing is pretty darn useless. This has a niche ability of one-shotting open-world mobs instantaneously at max spec 8.4. But other than that, it's pretty niche and useless pretty much everywhere. Probably one of the worst bows. The Bow of Badon is a, it, it's meta for uh, corrupted dungeons. It's meta for soloing group dungeons, static mobs. It does have a higher cooldown and lower damage, so it's not the best, but you can do it. Uh, it's also really good for Mist PvP. This is kind of your go-to Mist PvP weapon. I think if I were to ever, like, be one of those chads that runs around in a yellow zone, they're not called Kings. An 8.4 player in a Mist is called a chad. It's always been called a chad. I didn't make that, okay? I am not the 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 father of that term. But the, the Bow of Badon is probably the most meta weapon for Mist PvP. It also lets you one-shot uh, harvestable mobs in yellow zones. This thing is just super useful. I really need to buy me an 8.4 version of this, and I just haven't bothered. The Mist Piercer, if you use a certain combo, you can delete people in a faction fight. There are better weapons for this, but it's pretty darn useful in faction fighting. Not much useful elsewhere. Let's get to Leather Helmets now. Mercenary Hood, this is used for cleansing. That's really about it. Howl is a really terrible spell, don't bother. It's also one of the cheaper uh, helmets because it's so useless. Hunter Hood is a Reflect spell. This is being nerfed once again. This item always goes up and down in value. Like, after like a half a year, they'll probably buff it back to 100%. They always do, or at least they always have. Uh, you just cast this and you reflect damage. So, one-shot builds. This is how you counter them, kind of. The Assassin Hood lowers all your cooldowns. This is great for traveling. This is great for people that spam abilities. It's a fun helmet. It's really interesting to be able to just get all your cooldowns back. For the most part, very useful. The Royal Hood is a damage steroid. This is the best damage steroid helmet in the game, but it's awkward and clunky to use. 
You cast it, you get this little buff under you, and if you don't attack someone on that buff tick, it does not stick. So if you go beyond 6 seconds, you lose the buff entirely. If you attack someone on the first tick, you only get 4% damage increase, which is pretty much useless. Uh, the, uh, the Stalker Hood is great for revealing invisible targets. This also shreds armor amazingly well for targets below 50% HP. I have highly considered testing this helmet for farming mobs in static dungeons, and I believe it might be the best in slot for that, but I am not entirely sure. More testing in, is necessary. This is one of my favorite helmets, though. It's a damage steroid, it's, it's instant fast cast, it's a low cooldown of 15 seconds, this thing is, is, is a sleeper hit. I love it. The Hellion Hood drops a uh, smoke bomb, turning you invisible and silencing anyone in the cloud. For auto attack builds, this is amazing, and also faction fight people hate this helmet because it's self-serving and they hate that. So very fun helmet to use for bow builds, dagger builds, and so on. The Spectre Hood is probably the most used helmet in the game because it resets the cooldown on your chest piece which opens up a whole bunch of different possibilities of doubling down on your armor's abilities. Super useful stuff. Mistwalker Hood makes it where you can't die as long as this ability is activated. Uh, so you can kind of do like a last stand martyr kind of thing and just get a bunch of people down. I've messed around with this with a great axe attacking factions and I've had great success with it. Uh, what, what I do is I will attack, like I'll, I'll attack a blob, I'll use a keeper cape, and then when I'm about to die, I pop this helmet, and then I use all of my abilities, and I'm dealing tremendous amounts of damage to everything around me. So I do die, unfortunately, but I take out a lot of targets with me. This thing needs more testing. It, it, I think it's useful. I think it's a really fun helmet. The Hood of Tenacity can be used to purge. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. This is not the purge helmet. That's the play one. This one deals damage, but it also reduces healing received uh, and the amount that they heal when casting spells, which I believe is new. I don't use this helmet much. I've never really seen this helmet used in anything for solo players. I'm sorry, you know, whatever. Let's just move on to leather jackets. Leather jackets are pretty meta for every type of player. The mercenary jacket, when activated, heals you when you deal damage. This is pretty useful for soloing group, certain group dungeon bosses. I still use this for certain bosses. It's useful in world PvP. New players tend to be told to use this to solo dungeons. I disagree with that statement. I think they need to learn how to dodge attacks. Dodging is far more useful in a solo dungeon than just, you know, hammering through it with a, a sustain. Hunter Jacket is great for daggers and whispering bows, and that's really about it. It doesn't have much use elsewhere. It's a damage steroid and attack speed steroid. I've tried it with, like, swords and a few other meta builds. And it, it, it's, it's okay with dual swords, but other than, than that, it, it doesn't have a lot of use. Assassin Jacket turns you invisible, makes your next attack deal tremendous damage if you let it charge up. This is used by so many people. Gankers, you can use this for skip sets. It's a great all-around uh, uh, jacket. I, I would recommend leveling this up at some point as a solo player. Royal Jacket, you can use... It, it got heavily nerfed for self-use. But uh, it used to, it, it was a 50% cooldown rate for yourself, but now it's just for your allies. This doesn't let you tag allies to get credit for their kills. Pretty useless for solo players unless you're traveling around and it, uh, maybe using a skip set. Other than that, solo players have no use for this thing. Uh, <laughs> Stalker Jacket, however, is a tremendously large damage circle around you. This thing is slaps. This thing is great. This thing is mandatory for ganking transport solo. It's my favorite for farming static mobs and clearing group dungeons solo quickly. This is the armor that I would use for most things as a solo player, once it's max spec and max geared, of course. Alien Jacket, until then, is your go-to for soloing dungeons and static mobs, because it's also a circle that deals damage around you, but it heals you. Not as much damage as the Stalker Jacket, but this is your go-to sustained chest piece. This is absolutely meta for PvP. If you're low on health in the mists, you run into a pack of mobs, you turn this on, you're suddenly fully healed and your opponent's dead. It's really good. Vector Jacket has a niche use currently for soloing solo dungeons very quickly. Other than that, it's pretty damn useless. Uh, they nerfed its damage to players by making it percentage of max HP, which does not stack with other players also stacking it. I've tried. There's really no use for this other than soloing dungeons. Mistwalker Jacket is very meta for mist fighting, for corrupted dungeons. It makes you immune 
and turns you invisible. It, it, it's basically, it stalls time, it lets you negate an enemy's execute. Uh, it has a lot of PvP functionality. For PvE, it's pretty useless though. Jacket of Tenacity is a damage steroid or a defense steroid, depending on what, what you target, who you target. It's kind of meta for sword users in Corrupted Dungeons, but I haven't seen it being used other than that. Moving on now to the leather boots, we have the Mercenary Shoes, which is useful for transporting goods and uh, avoiding being attacked in a clump. That's basically it. Uh, hunter Shoes are useful for increasing your crowd control on the target. Not much use for solo players. Assassin Shoes are a single target damage spell. There's better boots for increasing your damage against mobs, against players. This doesn't have much use. There's better boots. Uh, Royal sh uh, Shoes lets you do a cool jump in the air. It's really neat and cool looking. It makes you like flip like a ninja. But other than that, it doesn't have much use. It's just not that great for solo players. Star Shoes are an okay damage steroid that you can also use to get damage immunity because it is a blink. This is just a better boot to use than like say the mage or the cleric sandals, honestly. The Hellion Shoes are one of my favorite fun boots. It turns you invisible, it makes a loud noise, it puts an arrow over a target's head, and it teleports you next to them. It deals, it, it grants you 35% additional damage when you cast it. Uh, for a short time, it's very powerful, but this thing is countered by so many things that in PvP, it's basically useless because of all the counters. But it is a fun thing to just cast on a target and then, and then attack them with a really high damage skill. I think it's a fun boot to use. The Spectre Shoes are great for solo invisible ganking because it lets you walk around invisible. You can use this for skip sets and walking past mobs. It has a niche use for in, in Roads of Avalon, but solo players shouldn't really ever go there. Mistwalker Shoes. This lets you dash forward, dump your load, and then teleport away. <laughs> it's, it's kind of niche use. I haven't seen anyone really pull this off. There's just better boots. Shoes of Tenacity is more so for Hardcore Expeditions. This thing has a very low cooldown for crossbow users. That makes it really, really good. Like, you slap on an 8.4 pair of these with a crossbow set in the yellow zone, and you are an absolute monster to deal with. These things hit super hard at max spec and max gear. I might make a video of that one day, maybe for members only, but until then... Uh, they're mostly used in PvE, uh, not so much PvP, because there's no real escape. It's an all-in kind of boot. Shields, 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 shields. This shield is possibly, besides the Tome of Spells, one of the cheapest offhands in the game. If you just want to go out with something in that weapon slot, like you're doing a flat force set to go die in the black zone or something, then you could use a shield. It doesn't really give you that much defense. There's no reason to use this in PvE. In PvP, you're not really going to notice a difference. The Sarcophagus... Same thing, slightly more defense than the shield. It's useful for tanks, I guess. The the KTIF shield, crowd control duration, whoop de doo That's like for group stuff. Facebreaker is kind of meta because it increases your damage, your defense, your threat generation. A lot of people will use this to solo static mobs. This is not ideal. You don't need the defenses. Just go Crypt Candle. Uh, Astral Aegis, some people will use this to solo very specific dungeon bosses. You don't need it. It's... Maybe wear this for transporting. I don't really see a point for a solo player to use shields, honestly, at all. Crossbows, crossbows, crossbows. Oh boy, crossbows are actually super amazing for solo players. The crossbow is a very long range, high damage spell that deals physical damage. This thing is going to be nutty with the new Morgana cape. I'm going to be out here one tapping people with this bad boy whenever that cape gets its rework done. The heavy crossbow sucks. Deals low damage. whoop de do it interrupts spellcasting. Who cares? That's it's use it's a useless weapon, don't bother. The light crossbow is the meta go-to um it, it's the highest ranked PvP weapon in the game in mists. Uh it, there's an 8.4 guy that roams around with these and he just slays everything. It's it does take skill though, because you have to aim the explosive bolts, you have to aim the caltrops. Uh for soloing dungeons, this is the fastest weapon in the entire game at high specs in tier 5. At tier 8, the damage falls off a bit due to enemies' defenses, and you're not going to bring 8.4 light crossbows for a solo dungeon. So, you would want a more sustained DPS weapon like a Nature Staff for higher tier dungeons, but for soloing Yellow Zone tier 5 dungeons, this is the fastest weapon in the entire game bar none. It is 
absolutely amazing. Weeping Repeater, you would think it would be useful because you could put mines down and then people run into the mines, but people just don't run into the mines. This is maybe useful if there is a very large faction fight and you spam it in, in, in the middle of a blob, maybe, and no one notices. I've only ever seen one clip in three years of this being useful. Bolt Casters are the go-to fastest solo dungeon clearing weapon in the game if you have no specialization, no spec, and no good gear. This outclasses the light crossbow simply because at lower specs, you will deal more damage with your e-spell. That's it. The reason why that light crossbow is better at high specs is because it is a one-handed weapon, and because it's one-handed, you can wear a crypt candle, which will juice up your stalker jacket. I believe I said that correctly. Spectre jacket. It will juice up your spectre jacket. Whereas bolt casters are two-handed. You can't juice up a spectre jacket. You're not high spec, so your spectre jacket won't deal enough damage. Other than that, this thing is really good for upfront single target damage. It is very nutty in that regard. If someone dismounts in front of you in PvP, they have five seconds before they can do anything. You cast this, they're dead. I have several videos on my channel showing this. The Siege Bow is actually very powerful when it comes to faction fighting. Uh, out, of, out of all spells that have AoE escalation, this one is really wonky. Um, after a certain point, it will start two tapping players, if there are enough of them, which not many weapons do. The, the, the Meteor, the Brimstone Staff also does this. So Brimstone Staff is better than Siege, Siege Bow, but Siege Bow is it's fun, it's easy to use. It's not really that useful outside of faction fighting. Energy Shaper is a niche weapon, it's a line attack. This thing deals the most damage to players in the entire game if they sit inside the laser the entire time. There is no harder hitting single target ability or line attack ability in the game than this. It's also really cool because it's like a space laser cannon, which really doesn't make sense in this world of magic and, and ancient weapons. But uh, regardless, this is the, this is the most gun-like weapon that the game has, and it's a freaking space laser cannon, right? You would find this on a spaceship. It's really, it's the coolest weapon, possibly besides the Kingmaker. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I haven't really found much of a use for this other than if there's a fight on a bridge or a choke point. Other than that, it's kind of a dead weapon. Let's talk about bra uh, the war gloves for a sec here. Alright, so we have the brawler gloves. They, they are okay at throwing enemies in the air, not much use elsewhere. The battle bracers are a meta weapon for PvP, roaming PvP, hit and run PvP, group PvP, solo PvP. These things slap. They're also decent at fame farming in the mists. They deal lots of damage. They're highly mobile. They're pretty darned well-rounded. The Spike Gauntlets are the go-to fastest way to clear open-world mobs in the entire game. They are not the safest. Like, if you're fighting a boss, you would want a curse staff because you can sit on your mount while the curses kill the enemy, whereas this you have to actively be fighting. This is useful for one-shotting mobs if you gather them, uh, if you just want to one-shot open-world mobs. Like, if I wanted to farm a Black Zone Tier 8, I would use probably a Tier 6 or Tier 7 Spike Gauntlets, and I would still be able to one-shot a lot of mobs, maybe two or three-shot them. It, this is just a really fast and hard-hitting weapon. This deals more damage to plate users, so if there's a bunch of tanks, you know, they're bombing your faction, you can punch them with this, and it'll deal, it'll make them back off. It won't kill them, but it, it'll back them up a bit. Uh, let's see here, we have Earth Sign Ballers. There's a meme where you can use this uh, in a faction fight and delete everyone, but it's kind of like you're killing them after you've hit this, and that gives them time to heal or shield or recover. It's it's a meme weapon. I wouldn't really use it for solo play. The Hellfire Hands is also a one-shot weapon. You can If you do this correctly, you uh, use the triple kick. Uh, you cast this, you triple kick them, you can hit them with all three boulders. It's hard to pull off, but when you do, it's it's pretty fun. Otherwise, it has no use in solo play. There's just better weapons. The Raven Strike, it's it's a cool weapon, but it, there's better weapons for what it does. It's just an AoE attack, throws enemies in the air. The Fists of Avalon, again, it deals more damage than some of the other gloves, but it's awkward to use. The cooldowns, it's it's not really the best for solo players. It has no use in PvE, just use Spike Gauntlets. Hammers, not very useful for solo players, but there's a few niche uses. Alright, so the hammer, pretty useless in PvE for solo PvP, faction PvP, you're better off with other weapons. There's no reason to use this. Full hammer, same thing, there's no reason to use this. 
Great Hammer is actually a meta weapon for solo PvP. Uh, for missed PvP in an open environment, not not those new dungeons coming out with, with dead ends. This thing allows you to run down anyone or escape from anyone in the game due to uh, the slowing charge and then the tackle, which is also a stun. This thing, I've, I made an entire video on this. There's a streamer called Africa Now, and he makes very strong use of this build. So go check that out if you want more information. But for solo PvE, it sucks. There's no reason to use hammers at all to farm mobs. Tomb Hammer is a corrupted dungeon um, meta weapon, which can be used to range stun a target, usually in traps or to follow up with some hit and run tactics. Forge Hammers are really, really good at tagging enemy players in faction fights. I have considered maxing this out because it's so damn good. This makes you big, it increases your armor and magic resistance, it increases your attack range, it slows enemies around you. These are all, um, like, if you want to jump into a group of enemy players and tag them for faction fighting, this might be possibly the best weapon for that. If you don't want to heal allies and tag them as well, like, if you just want to tag enemies, this might be the go-to weapon. I, have, I I need to test test it more. I've taken notice of a few players using this in faction fights who get insane amount of knockdowns per week. This might be the best possible weapon for that, but I don't know for sure yet. But in 1v1s and Corrupted Dungeons, these things are hard to fight, they're annoying to fight, they're dangerous, they kind of vacuum you in with the slow, and you can't really fight back because of their resistance. It's a low cooldown. All in all, these things are pretty beastly, but for farming open world mobs, for farming dungeons, you wouldn't use these. Grove Keeper is uh, really good if you uh, have friends with you, but other than that, we're, so we're talking about solo players in this video. Not much use, you attack enemies in an AoE and you get some armor. Whoop -de doo The Hand of Justice, again, this is for ZVZs, this is for people doing organized stuff. You don't really have much of a use for this. You spin around, you collect a bunch of enemies along with your spin, and then you dump them out, deal some damage, throw them in the air, whatever, who cares. It, it's not useful for solo players. Maces, and again, maces aren't really that great for solo players, but they're, they're fun. There's some fun uses, we'll talk about them. The regular mace is, um, it's pretty mobile, you can use it as a mobile weapon for, for navigation. Uh, you can use it to uh, tag enemies. Other than that, uh, it hits pretty hard with a Crypt Candle. Maces hit pretty decently hard. You can farm open world mobs with a Carleon Cape and a Mace pretty quickly, actually, in a, in a Tier 5 Yellow Zone with max spec and 8.4, but it doesn't have much other farming use than that. You could solo group like static mobs with this too, but it's slow. There's no real reason to use it. Heavy Mace... Um, is super annoying to the enemy. If you just want to troll the enemy, this is a great troll weapon to purge. Uh, but other than that, pretty useless for solo players. Morningstar is... Um, this used to be a meta weapon for duo ganking, but I believe they nerfed it. I have never seen this used ever since the nerf. I have no experience with this weapon. I can't really comment on it. It's useless in PvE, and in solo PvP, there's no reason to use this. The Bedrock Mace is probably my favorite mace in the whole game. This thing is the most fun troll weapon there ever is. You have Force of Nature. It's a low cooldown. It knocks players back an insane distance. You can use this in a world boss area to knock players into monsters to kill them. You can use this to knock players away that are chasing you almost indefinitely. Uh, this is <laughs> the most annoying weapon to chase someone down in. If, if they're doing like a faction transport and they have a bunch of knockbacks, I just I just say forget it. it it's, not a, it's not worth the trouble trying to kill them if they have one of these bad boys. Other than that, it's not really useful for farming. Um, I have seen an Only Rats video, shoutouts to Only Rats, the YouTube YouTuber, who um, he, he was able to fame farm really good with this weapon. He showed that in the mists, he could just knock everyone away and steal the wisps. And you can even knock enemies away from the caged wisps. And rescue them before the mobs can res can attack you and cancel your animation. So th you can fame farm this up in the mists. That that is so nutty. That is so cool. Incubus Mace is for group PVE players to lower the current health and damage dealt by enemies. This is the meta for PVE tanking. For solo play, you have no use for this. Camland Mace. You can suck a bunch of enemies in. There's better weapons to do this now. Um, namely the uh, was Enigmatic Staff. No, no, the the Witchwork Staff is way better than this. There's no reason to use this anymore. The Oath Keepers are a meta weapon in Corrupted Dungeons. Man, these things are annoying to fight against. Every time I go into Corrupted Dungeons and someone ha has these, 
I just break crystals because you're never going to kill them. You're never going to chase them down. They're they're hyper mobile because what this does is it increases their move speed. It gives them a shield and it gives them they heal when they hit you. This is the most annoying weapon I have ever fought in corrupted dungeons. If my opponent knows how to run away from me, I can never kill them. This is the never get killed weapon. This is also very useful in um in a faction fighting because for whatever reason the the move speed tags your allies even though the shield doesn't the move speed does so if you if you buff someone's move speed and they kill a player you get points for it uh also it, because it shields you it makes you hard to kill it, it's it's just super annoying weapon to fight against uh might be very good for tagging though uh if you can max it out i don't have experience with it personally Axes, axes, axes. This used to be the meta weapon for solo players. This is what Reddit told all the new players to use back in the day, and I fell for the trap, but hey, they, they've kind of regained their uh, popularity. Let's talk about the Battle Axe. It is possibly known as the best 1v1 brawling weapon in the open world. This thing has a ranged nuke, a self-heal, it deals tremendous damage, it's a one-handed weapon so you can juice it up with an offhand, it has high mobility, you can't go wrong with the Battle Axe build. And so they're also cheap. They're very cheap. The Great Axe is possibly the easiest to use weapon in the game. That's why it's recommended to a lot of new players because it's freaking easy to use. You can also, this was my first weapon I've ever leveled up in the game. Uh, you can solo group dungeon mobs with it. You can solo static mobs with it. It's not as fast as a Shadow Crawler, but it, you, it gets the job done. It's also, I'm experimenting more with it with, with attacking, uh, like, bombing faction players with it. I've had good success and sometimes not so much. The Halberd, it just spreads the bleed around. This is pretty useless. There's better weapons to deal damage. The Carrion Caller is only really useful in arenas for reducing healing received. If there's a lot of healers, you might pull one of these out, I guess, in a faction fight, but... I've only ever seen this useful in Arena. Uh, it, otherwise, it sucks. The Infernal Scythe was nerfed. It used to be an execute weapon, a very good one, but now not so much. It's kind of awkward and clunky to use. Bear Paws are my number one favorite PvP weapon in the game. If I want to attack a Gatherer, a, a Botter, a Fisherman in the Yellow Zones, even in the Red Zones, even in the Black Zones, these are my go-to weapons. These are my favorite PvP weapons in the entire game because of the high mobility, the high burst, I can stick to targets, it, it's it's very, very good. It's the best weapon for knocking down or killing a mounted player's transport. Like, if you see gank groups in the red zones, they're going to run like a bunch of bear paws. The only problem that I have with bear paws is that they're expensive. They're very expensive. 121,000 for just a flat four versus the axes, 1,000. These things are 100 times more expensive than other axes. And it only scales up on the on the East server. These things were insanely overpriced for several days. It was nutty. The Realm Breaker is cool if you want to like attack a, a blob and you know reduce their max health. But for solo players, there's not much of a use for this. Maybe it's good for static mobs if you have some friends, but for solo players, there's no reason to use a Realm Breaker. Let's go to swords. Swords are interesting for solo players. They used to be kind of meta, but not so much anymore. The regular broadsword, it deals damage, it's okay, um, someone can kick your butt in a corrupted dungeon with it with the right offhand and cape, but other than that, they're pretty boring and bland. The claymore is, it used to be one of the most meta of all corrupted dungeon weapons, I don't know what happened, I don't play swords, but um, basically you would run at your opponent with three charges and open on them with, with the claymore, and that put you at a huge advantage. Dual Swords got nerfed, but they're still decent. Um, they're mobile, they make your auto attacks fast. They're okay. The Clarent Blade, I've seen this used in pretty powerful fashion in Mists. Uh, I tried to solo static mobs with it, and it did okay, but it wasn't that great. Not really useful for solo players. Carving Sword has a lot of mobility and a decent amount of damage against single targets, but against groups of targets, like for PvE, it's not the greatest. I tried this out for solo farming mobs, dungeons, and stuff, and it's there's just better weapons. For PvP, though, uh, this might be the new meta for Mist PvP. This is shaping up to be the most powerful 1v1 Mist weapon due to its mobility, its chase potential, the fact that it armor shreds targets. It's it's 
It's still up in the air, though. We don't know for sure. Galatine Pair is used to bomb clumps of faction fighters. It deals a tremendous amount of damage, but you're better off with a Brimstone Staff. You're better off with Siege Bow. Uh, the damage escalation on this is actually pretty good, but uh, against smaller faction fights, not so much. It's also really hard to land the hit, but when you do, it feels good. But other than that, it's difficult to use. Keymaker is possibly one of the coolest weapons in the game because it's a really big and nice looking sword. You swing it around like your uh, Fran from Reincarnated as a Sword. It's got that feel to it. And um, I have actually fought a maximum spec 8.4 player. He two-shotted me with this. I don't know how he did, but he did. He, I was wearing leather armor in my 8.4. He killed me in two hits with this. I don't know if he was cheating or if that's just how powerful the weapon actually is. When I've tested this on the test realm, I have not gotten nearly close to that damage, so I don't know how he specifically did it, but it is possible. Maybe he's just the, the sword hero. Let's talk about plate helmets. The soldier helmet has block. Boring. You don't really need that for solo play. Uh, the knight helmet reduces your damage. Again, solo players don't need this. The guardian helmet is the go-to helmet in the entire game for dealing with curse stabs. If I'm a curse staff player and someone has this helmet, I just turn around and leave, because there's no point for me to fight them. The Royal Helmet drops a barrel which stuns players. You can set this up for some meme combos, but it's hard to land, it's awkward to use, it's kind of a meme helmet. As a solo player, you can't use Sacrifice at all in a faction fight, I guess. Why would you do that? Ever. <laughs> Demon Helmet is an auto-attack silence. Now, I have a problem with this helmet. I have a big problem. This helmet has costed me a couple million silver. Let me explain. When you cast this and you do your auto attack, there is a delay to when the silence is applied. What this means is that if you start comboing someone and you expect them to be silenced, they still have a little bit of time to toggle on their cleric robe and then kill you. And because of that, this is not as, as useful as you would think. In PvE, it's useless. You don't need to silence enemies. In PvP, if the silence doesn't apply instantly for some reason, then you're, you're screwed. The Judicator Helmet is great for tagging lots of enemy players in a faction fight. It deals damage, it stuns them, it's, um, it's, a, it's a cast, and then the delay of the, of the spell happens shortly afterwards. So you can, you can run through a crowd and cast it, and you'll tag a bunch of people. It's really good for tagging and not much else for solo players. The Duskweaver Helmet uh, lets you be Spider-Man. You can shoot a you know, web at someone, and then you can fly at them if you want. Not much use for solo players. The Helmet of Valor, this is the one that purges um, buffs. You can make people uninvisible if you aim it correctly. It's pretty fun to use. It's annoying to get used against you if you're bootsing around. You can cancel someone's boots with proper aim. Other than that, for solo players, no point to use this on enemies, monsters. No real point to use this on clumps of players. There's better ways to tag them. Let's talk about plate armor. Soldier armor is actually amazingly powerful in 1v1 corrupted dungeons and open world. I'm still experimenting with this bad boy, but I have actually won more fights than I've lost with this armor. Uh, it makes you tanky, and once you have the Fury stacked up, uh, you deal lots of damage. And the enemy kind of has a choice. If you have Fury activated, they can choose not to attack you for 10 seconds, which is a huge advantage for you. Most people are just going to attack you anyway to ignore it and let you get buffed up. And when you get buffed up, you deal 70% um, increased damage. <laughs> so... That's pretty nutty, even though because it's plate, you only have that 10%, so you would only be at 80%. But hey, the fact that you're also tanking and dealing lots of damage, it's a win-win. Knight armor is a wind wall. It's now channeled. This is pretty useless. Uh, you can hit enemies with it and get the tag, but other than that, maybe knock them into an, an enemy mob if you position it correctly. There's not much else used for it. Guardian armor, it lowers. This is really good for enemy tagging. You run through a group of enemy players in a faction fight. You can tag them all with this. It makes you tanky, it slows them down, it reveals invisible enemies, it's super useful, and you're tanky while you work because it's plate armor. Royal armor steals energy from enemies, and uh, not much else. It doesn't let you tag... This, this doesn't count as tagging enemies for some reason. I don't know why. Graveguard armor is funny because you can latch a chain onto someone, and when they run away, they'll be yoinked back to you. Uh, other than that, it's not really that useful. You can use it with harpoon or someone that's fleeing a faction fight. Not much else. You, it's just a fun armor to troll with. Demon armor is the self-sacrifice armor. 
it lowers your damage resistance um, by a lot, and it gives you Reflect. Basically, if you're about to get clump and dumped in a faction fight, cast this, you will die. All your enemies will live, but you will get kill credit for everyone that um, decided to cast on the pile. Because all that damage gets reflected from all of your allies onto them, and they will just nuke themselves, essentially. So, just wear flat four in a faction fight, and then and then stand in the clumps for fun, I guess. That's a video idea. <laughs> Judicator armor drops a, a, a damage resistance bubble on the ground. Also increases healing received. It's pretty damn useful uh, for if you want to be a team player, I guess. But for solo players, there's no real use for this. Dusk Weaver armor leaves a sticky web on the ground. This is actually good for tagging enemy players. Um, the cooldown's a little high, though. Uh, I don't really enjoy that part of it. Also, they're, they're a little bit more expensive, so I just go with Guardian armor for tagging. But you can use Dusk Weaver armor if you want. The armor of Valor, whenever you, t you take damage, you silence the enemy and deal damage to them. This can be really useful for tagging if everyone focuses on you, but... Um, it's expensive. It's just an expensive piece of armor. Just use the Guardian armor. It does the same thing, man. Uh, plate boots are insanely useful for solo players. These soldier boots are one of the most useful with Wanderlust. This thing will increase your speed for quite a while, and it stacks up, so it ramps up your speed. Great for chasing players. Great for running from players without a purge. Absolute must-have. Also, all plate boots have this rejuvenating sprint, which is meta for Corrupted Dungeon PvP and Mist PvP. You just use this to heal yourself and run fast. It's very useful in almost all situations. Night Boots give you a shield. Not much to say about that. Um, the shield can get actually quite high at higher tiers. So tier 4 is 400, tier 8 is 657. So, uh, you know, you can you can get a shield over 1,000 with a the, with the high enough gear quality and specialization. Guardian Boots are my go-to meta boots for players starting out for solo and group dungeons. Soloing group dungeon bosses and soloing static dungeon. This thing doubles your health pool, which means all the damage you take is essentially reduced by 50% during the duration of 8 seconds. That's a long time to have. It does have a high cooldown, unfortunately, but this thing is great for reducing damage. And it also, if you're a turret build, like a, like a, a, a bow, and you want to just, you know, man fight the enemy where none of you run away and you just slam into each other till you die... Whoever has Guardian Boots wins every single time, because they have basically double their health pool. The Royal Boots are kind of a niche. I've seen this in Corrupted Dungeons, but not much else. Not really useful anywhere else. Uh, and, oh, what it does, I'll go and explain. It makes you immune to Roots and Slows, and increases your speed over time. That's basically it. It used to be way more powerful, but they nerfed it. The Graveguard Boots, you have to time this whenever you get crowd controlled, and it makes you run faster. It makes you immune to run st stuns and roots and stuff. Uh, oh, uh, actually, they changed the, the functionality. I'm sorry. It, it's now a cleanse. It, gi it gives you immunity and it cleanses you. Okay, so that's better. This thing was so awkward to use back in the day. Demon boots are very, very good when combined with an undead cape. This lets you run fast and deal damage, though. This is mostly used for escaping. You get an insane amount of move speed if you use this when you're on very low HP. It's also a decent duration. The cooldown on it kind of sucks, though. The Adjudicator Boots allow you to knock enemies up in the air. Does This does not count as tagging them, unfortunately. So, this has a niche use, niche combo usage. For solo players, PvE and PvP, I would recommend a different boot. The Dusk Weaver Boots knocks players around. If you knock them into a wall, they take a little bit of damage. or They take damage anyway, but if you knock them into a wall, they get stunned. I have never seen this used at all, ever. I've never had it used against me. I've never seen anyone combo this with anything. Um, the, there's potential, but I don't know it. The Boots of Valor. Okay, this is the one. Yeah, you, um, <laughs> you become immune to force movements. If you get stunned or rooted, you break it, and then you increase your move speed by a whole bunch. So, awkward to use, not very good for solo players, no real reason to use this for a solo player. Next up we have potions for solo players. Poison potion, don't use this against monsters, don't use this in dungeons, you're wasting your money. But hey, I'm a potion seller, so feel free to waste away. <laughs> um, energy potion, you generally don't need this, except for like nuke builds. Healing potion... This is what you're mostly going to be using. Just use the crappy tier 4 ones. You don't need to use the 6.1, you know, 
it's a minor difference. Uh, Gigantify is like having Guardian Boots, pretty dang useful, also useful for transporters. Sticky Potion, this is mostly used to reveal people that go invisible, um, which I don't believe is in the tool. Oh, yeah, it is. It's at the bottom now. They, they added it finally. And then you have Resistance Potion, useful to increase your defense if you're getting, like, bombed. Other than that, there's the Invisibility Potion if you want to gank players by approaching them while they're gathering. This is what you would use, but not much else. Let's talk about foods. Uh, there's a few foods you'll, you'll be using as a solo player. Let's start with the tier eight ones. Beef sandwich if you're tanking, which I don't know why you're tanking as a solo player. Beef stew for damage. Uh, these are your mostly your go-tos. Pork omelet for ability cooldown reduction and spam. Pork pie for gatherers. Roast pork is for soloing group dungeons and soloing static mobs. This is the item that makes it possible to solo because it gives you lifesteal. And yes, there is the Pure Mist Snapper. This gives you more health and life steal. You don't need this for PvE. This is actually a meta food for the Mist PvP. Other than that, not much other use for foods. Uh, we have Cabbage Soup for solo dungeons, especially with the Spectre Jacket that drains your HP. This thing will give you that health regeneration between pulls to be full health every single time. One of my favorite foods. Uh, other than that, that's about it for foods. So let's talk about capes. And yes, I know we're going up back back up on the Destiny board now. Let's talk about capes. I'm not going to talk about the new capes because they're still kind of undis undiscovered. Ridgewatch cape will actually do a slow around you and not the enemies that you attack. That's going to be changed. Might be useful for melees. I haven't found a use for it in testing. The Fort Sterling cape uh, will basically cleanse crowd control one time. It's pretty cool in that regards, um, but I prefer the Martlock Cape, which reduces... Uh, uh, when you get low on health, uh, your defense increases by 50%. That's a huge amount, and for 5 seconds, that makes you super tanky. Limbhurst Cape is very useful for energy regeneration if your build lacks any, you know, if your mana cost is too high on abilities. That Fruit Cape is your go-to item for solo players because it deals... A large amount of damage from range to four targets with only a 15 second cooldown. Early Own Cape lets you cast your Q spell twice. Very, very useful for curse stabs and crossbows. Heretic Cape drops a trap on the ground. This is useful for one-handed daggers and that's really about it. If you use a meme build, you can do a one-shot with an energy shaper by rooting someone in place. It's just a meme though. The Keeper Cape increases your damage when you drop below 70% HP. Niche use... Maybe for faction bombing. That's what I use it for. Morgana Cape is going to be changed. It's going to activate the second you cast your E-Spell. Which means it will apply before your E-Spell applies. Which means, on a, like currently in the game, if I use my crossbow snipe ability, my character will channel the snipe, shoot the bolt after 2.5 seconds, and then the cape applies. Whereas in the new changes, as soon as I begin to use my snipe ability, the cape applies... It applies to the E spell, and it will be 1.25 second cast time. So very powerful in the upcoming patch. This is going to be meta. Undead Cape turns you invisible only for 5 seconds. This is 6. It's being nerfed down to 5 seconds. This is useful for dealing damage to players in, like, say, faction fighting, and then escaping without dying, without a repair bill. The Undead Cape drops a puddle of uh, lava underneath someone's feet. This can be useful for, like, group dungeon bosses and... Uh, missed, I'm sorry, uh, static dungeon enemies, but it has a one minute cooldown. Just use the Thetford Cape, it's more damage. Uh, dem demo hammers are used to smash guilds objects that they place around their hideouts uh, to make them mad. That's really about it for solo players. Anyway, that's the video. I know it's been a long one, longer than the last one, but I wanted to just really emphasize why you would use these items in as a solo player, what they would be useful for. And yes, I could talk about mounts. I could talk about mounts for a little bit. Solo player mounts. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you from my chest here. Okay, solo player mounts. The Morgana Nightmare is completely useless because you can't use this spell in faction warfare. I have one for sale if you want to buy it from me. <laughs> the bears, there are two main bears, the elite winter bear and then the grizzly bear. Uh the grizzly bear is a better choice because of its passive ability to increase your speed when you take damage for transporting. The Winter Bear is more useful for pulling static mobs in the open world because it's more tanky and has more HP. That's why I have both. The Wild Boar gives you a lot of carry weight, 
Uh, and it's also pretty beefy in terms of HP and armor. This is your best gathering mount in the game, the Elite Wild Boar. The Husky is the fastest mount in the game, so if you're traveling around, use the Husky. The Transport Mammoth is the most carry weight in the entire game. If you need to move lots of items to and from markets or transport things, this is the mount you would use as a solo player. For faction fighting, Bridgewatch is number one, so you should always be flagged for Bridgewatch. I don't know why you're even watching my channel if you're not in Bridgewatch. It really hurts me when someone's like, I'm a fan, and they're not flagged for bridge watch. But anyway, the Elite Terror Bird has the best faction ability in the game by increasing your move speed, which lets you chase down transporters. No one else can do this but bridge watch. The Avalonian Basilisk is the best lizard mount for move speed because it has 115% move speed regardless if you're being attacked. It's also very beefy in its health and armor and magic resistance. It's also the coolest mount. This is the Lambo Lamborghini of mounts. The Black Panther is basically a Rage Claw, but without the cool skin. It's the best mount to use for open world um, killing mobs. The Morgana Raven can be used um, to move people. This is for yellow zone ganking, not PV, not fa faction PVP, just yellow zone ganking. You go up to someone gathering and you cast Raven Scream. It makes them run away from their mount, despawning their mount. They are now overweight, you're dismounted, and you kill them. Or down them, because it's a yellow zone. Uh, other mounts, that's pretty much it. If you are doing uh, Island Laborers, use a Spring Cottontail. They have a fast gallop, a time to gallop. Th their gallop speed is actually kind of bug. It's hard to demonstrate. It may not always work, but sometimes you can sometimes immediately break into a gallop from a standing position. Uh, if you, like, like say you walk up and you're doing your, your laborers, you know, your buff goes away, but sometimes it'll come right back immediately upon exiting the labor menu, making the Spring Cottontail the best mount in the game for handling laborers. I know that's super niche. Also, um, let, me, let me dismount there. There we go. The uh, Carleone Cottontail is the best mount in the game for ganking open world chests but you would need multiple players. As a solo player, this doesn't really help you much. I have one for sale. It's crafted by me. It's got my name on it. It's got my signature. If you want to buy it, let me know in the comments. I'll sell it to you. <laughs> um, other than that, there's gathering gear. You should have all gathering gear as a solo player because you should be making money, uh, all gathering tools, and there you go. That's basically it. That is the most useful items and every item for solo players that you should be using. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you're a new player, um, do note that um, you know this is my perspective of things. This is me as a solo player. There might be some niche uses uh, for some of these items, but generally as a solo player, your activity is quite limited. You're not doing castle siege warfare. You're not doing Zerg versus Zergs, or ZVZ as it's called. You're not doing a lot of uh, of that kind of content. So a lot of these items don't really have a use for you if you're doing solo dungeons, open world mobs, static group dungeons, and soloing group dungeons. Uh, also, they're talking about me in the chat. Anyway, that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed all one take, one hour, 30 minutes. It's been a long one. Make sure that you like the video because that really helps out. Uh, you can see in the chat I've got a lot of haters. They don't really like me because I push the solo play style and I'm a huge troll. You know, that, that's why I play video games, obviously. Anyway, click the video on the right side of your screen. If you want more advanced guides, you can click the join button right down below. You, you, you've you spent an hour and a half with me. If you want to spend more time, <laughs> click that join button, five bucks a month. It's like on Twitch when you subscribe to a channel. But here on YouTube, you get access to private, more personal videos, a members-only playlist of advanced guides, advanced flipping guides, money-making things, that mule thing that happened. You know how... Um, you know, the mule market completely crashed. Well, guess what? Channel members got access to that knowledge uh, a long time ago, at least 10 days before it got leaked. They had time to stock up on mules. <laughs> with that, oh, they're even talking about it in the chat. Mule power. Uh, with, with that said, guys, click the video on the right side of your screen. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you there.